With three 1-2 finishes in the opening three races, it may look like Mercedes are a consistent, dominant force this year. But closer inspection reveals a wilder, more unpredictable dance between the teams with respect to race-on-race -race performance. So those concerned that Mercedes will walk away from Ferrari this year might find reasons for optimism in the signs that getting the cars into that sweet setup spot is proving much more difficult in 2019. So what's going on then? In winter testing, Ferrari looked to have set the benchmark with some significantly strong laps both in qualifying simulations and over longer runs. We really expected them to have the run of the championship in the early races as they have for the previous two years. But Ferrari looked out of sorts in Melbourne as Mercedes romped away with a 1-2. The balance swung back towards the Scuderia and Bahrain with a dominant performance across almost the whole weekend, but for reliability issues and driver errors in the race. Without this disruption, was this the real Ferrari we'd expected out of testing in Catalonia? It's curious, isn't it? Right through the field, in fact, we're seeing teams and drivers having a mix of difficulties from race to race. Even Hamilton, despite his two wins, struggled to get the car where he liked it in Australia, Bahrain, and through most of the weekend in China. What we're seeing here is the result of it being much harder for teams to find the best setup for their cars to attack each track. It's becoming a struggle to find the perfect compromise to balance the competing needs of the car. In short, the window in which you can set up your car to run competitively has narrowed and is trickier to find. If there even is an ideal setup to find that doesn't leave you vulnerable in at least some regard. So what's caused this shift between 2018 and now? There are a couple of significant changes to the cars this year and together they're really making the cars trickier to get the most out of. Firstly, the tyres. Pirelli have narrowed the gauge of their tyres for this year. In simple terms they've made the rubber tread thinner, so there's less rubber on the outer layer of the tyre. The immediate consequences are that the tyres are now harder to heat up and hold their heat much less readily. The way rubber heats up is by stretching and releasing it, particularly as the car turns through the corners. The outer surface of the car grips the track and pulls on the tread, stretching it and squishing it. It's this action that generates heat in the rubber. If you reduce the thickness of the tread, as Pirelli have done, it makes the tyre less malleable, less easy to manipulate and therefore harder to heat up. There are benefits to this, or else Pirelli wouldn't have done it. The plus side here is that drivers can now lean on the tyres harder and longer than before and now have to think a lot less about conserving their life, a problem repeated through previous seasons. The tyres are far less liable to overheating now and therefore resist degradation that was rampant in older generation Pirellis. So drivers can now push for longer and be more aggressive out there on track. The difficulty for the teams and drivers is that it's now harder to get the tyres up to the ideal temperature and to keep them there. Red Bull have explicitly admitted struggling with certain compounds at times to keep the tyres inside that correct temperature window. The tyres can get too cool down the straights and a little bit too warm in the wiggly bits. Getting this balance right from track to track has become a real art now, which is why you may see the balance of power swinging between the teams and drivers who either have the right chassis to meet the circuit's characteristics or are able to get dialed in quickly to the demands of the track. Now, tied into getting tyres up to temperature, particularly at the front, is the matter of aerodynamic balance. Aero has been given a big overhaul, or perhaps I should say underhaul, this year with decomplication of the front wing and a boost in size to the rear wing. Perhaps counterintuitively, the new front wing doesn't actually offer a noticeable loss in front downforce despite its massive simplification. In fact, only the middle part of the front wing is really used for downforce. Everything else has long been about directing the air down and around the car, generating vortices and directing wash. These parts of the front wing are the bits that have been cleaned up for 2019. The only difficulty some teams may have, downforce-wise, is the restriction in the shape of the front wing elements. Each has to be a continuous piece without any overly aggressive changes in direction. This means it can be trickier to get the wing to maximise its downforce on the middle part of the wing while letting the outward section continue to do its job. Ferrari, with its downward tapered wings in particular, seemed to find it hard to nail down the front end in Australia even as they cranked up the front wing. They openly admitted balance problems there. It was not balanced, we struggled with the tyres and none of the setups we tried worked, said Ferrari principal Mattia Binotto. Balance is the key word here. In generating downforce, cars need to find a balance between the front and the rear. Too little at the front and the car won't find enough grip to turn into the corner, an effect otherwise known as understeer. On top of this, it will struggle to bring heat into those front tyres as it's not working them hard enough. Too little rear downforce and the rear end won't be planted enough to deliver the power from the wheels to the track and the back end will feel unstable and slidey. With these new aero regulations, the beefy rear wing has been given a huge boost 
in downforce generating power, while the front wing has been given very little scope for extra downforce. This means it's much harder to get the front end to balance out the downforce generating potential of the rear and get the car working right through the corner and keeping those tyres up to temperature. With these new challenges in mind and the fact that we've seen two distinct philosophies in front wing design, we're seeing teams finding it difficult from race to race to tune their cars into an ideal setup for the race. This also means passing some of the responsibility over to the driver, forcing them to be flexible in their approach. Lewis Hamilton in China said he had to change his driving style away from what he was used to to meet the limitations of the car's setup in Shanghai, and that he finally found the pace he needed to win after finding his usual aggressive turn in simply wasn't delivering the outright pace needed through practice. So, there's potential for a very interesting season ahead if we keep seeing these swings in performance born out of the vanishingly tricky ideal setup window for the cars. Not only have the rules made racing wheel to wheel slightly easier, but they've made the relative performances between the teams much more unpredictable as well. <laughs>